that. And last talk for tonight, I'm going to switch into English because this talk will also be in English. And in case you are English speaking, you probably noticed they around announced the wrong number of talks to be in English tonight. There's not two, but just one. Uh, but thanks for sticking uh, through to watch this one, and I think it's safe to promise that it was definitely worth your while. We're really happy to welcome Lisa Gutamut, who works at the Tactical Technology Collective here today. She gave a great talk at camp about the research that she's been doing, also for her master thesis, on um, satellite pictures, agricultural satellite pictures, and data protection issues connected to that. Uh, Lisa studied agricultural economics, so she has a very uh, different perspective on this topic, and we're really happy to welcome her here tonight to the talk. Applause, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm. Oh, then <laughs> uh, it's gone. But I'm going to give a talk about, about satellite imagery in agriculture, questioning privacy, data protection, <laughs> and autonomy in the field. Um, and this is a shorter version of a talk that I gave at CCC about two weeks ago. And, um, and yet with a uh, few reflections uh, from discussions that I've had since then and also further research that I've done on satellite imagery applied to other industries. Oh, okay, jetzt funktioniert's. Um, and I'm going to break the rules, and I'm going to first say what the conclusions of my talk are. And uh, those are that satellite imagery often supersedes data protection policies in many cases. And there are currently no opportunities for opting in or opting out. And there's no discrimination between public and private spaces. So just shortly, what I'm going to talk about is first how satellite imagery is applied in agriculture and how this has led to kind of the digitization of agriculture and the widespread use of farm management software. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the availability of satellite imagery for observation of farm activities and how this is an opportunity for transparency, but at the same time we need to question what are the privacy rights of farmers. So first, how is satellite imagery used in agriculture? Uh, this is an image, and on your left-hand side, there's uh, just a satellite image uh, that's visual light um, and or true color imagery, and this is what we're used to. This is what we see in Google Earth. Um, so this is kind of used for mapping purposes in agriculture, but what's really important is the center image, which is near-infrared light, and what that measures is um, the reflection of the chlorophyll in plant cells, so essentially the photosynthesis levels. Uh, so you can already see with that picture at a field level that there's variation in a field. Um, and then the third image is an NDVI image, which is Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which is an index of the data of the first two images put together. And what this shows is you can see there's green areas of the field, and that means that the plants are doing really well. And then there's yellow and red areas showing that there's stress for some reason, like either the plants aren't getting enough nutrients or there's water stress. Um, and what this has enabled in farming is um, precision, precision farming. Um, and essentially, a farmer can take the data from that NDVI image and put it in a USB stick or wirelessly transfer it to their tractor and spray on a field exactly uh, the fertilizer exactly where it's needed, whereas previously it was done blanketly. Um, so this has been really great for the farmers because they spend less money on fertilizer and is also good for the environment because there's less nitrogen leaching, less fertilizer getting into our waterways and into our drinking water. So this is one of the ways that has kind of led to the digitization of agriculture. Uh, the agricultural community was a very offline community, we'll say, um, until recently. Um, oh, and this is a bit changed. Um, but another way that satellite imagery is used in agriculture is um, that it tells the future. It actually, you can do yield forecasts, which means you can tell how much you're going to harvest before the end of the season. And this actually isn't new technology. Um, it's been used by governments for a long time, and it's actually a tool of geopolitical and intelligence importance. Um, and in 19, 1977, during the Cold War, there was the Lacey Program. And uh, this was to predict what wheat, yield, wheat yields would be on a large scale. So the US conducted this, this project. And they did it in the US. And they did it uh, in Canada. And they 
did it in Russia. And they did it to a very high level of accuracy. And when you, you can imagine that when you're in competition or conflict with a country and you can tell ahead of time what their wheel, wheat yields are going to be or what their feet, food yields are going to be, um, even maybe before they do, uh, and whether they're going to need to import food from you to feed their people, then it's a pretty good tool for knowing what your bargaining power is. Um, and now farmers use it today to protect their earnings so that they can uh, forecast what labor needs they're going to, what labor needs they're going to be, or what the prices of their yields are going to be. Um, yeah. So this is, as I said, led to kind of a revolution in agriculture, we'll say. Um, and it's, it's put farmers in a place that they're not used to in a field of data protection and privacy issues. So just to kind of highlight this, I'm going to read off a few quotes. Uh, so there's Tom Vilsack, the United States Secretary of Agriculture, says, data is quickly becoming one of the most important commodities in agriculture. Uh, in The Economist, it could be the biggest change to agriculture in rich countries since genetically modified crops. And it's proving nearly as controversial since it raises profound questions about who owns the information on which the service is based. It also plunges stick in the mud farmers into an unfamiliar world of big data and privacy battles. And Tech Republic says, six months ago, several members of the Farm Bureau said, data wasn't even a topic on the agenda. Today, it's in PowerPoint slides, hallway conversations, and question and answer sessions. So what are farmers' concerns? And, and by the way, farmers were actually very different than the general public. They were very concerned about their data protection uh, from the get-go. There was no, I have nothing to hide. They wanted to know who had, who had access to their data and if anybody was making money of it, out of it, then they wanted a cut. Um, and their concerns are that, these are just a few of them, uh, that commercial secrets could be sold or leaked to rival farmers. Uh, data could be used to buy underperforming farms and run them in competitions with the farmers, and they, uh, their data could be used on a harvest to trade on the commodity markets or essentially use it to make stock market decisions or manipulate the stock market. And many farmers are independent in principle. They've lived off the grid and just wanted their privacy and to provide for themselves and others. Um, and so what has been done? And actually, this is interesting, and at CCC I kind of highlighted this as um, an example because the agricultural community, at least in the U.S., really gathered quickly and addressed this issue and they drafted this privacy and security principles for farm data. And it's actually, this is just the first half of a page, um, but it's been undersigned by a lot of agricultural technology providers. So they've gotten a really good, uh, theme going, and agricultural technology providers also are very aware that uh, data protection is very important to farmers. However, um, even if farmers aren't using software, their activities can be closely observed by the satellite imagery that's available. So this is just a few examples of resources that are available, but this is uh, the Brandenburg Viewer, and this is, uh, this is infrared imagery that you can just scan around Brandenburg. This is the uh, Libra, which is a tool by the development seed, which has actually made it easier to access Landsat data, which is free and open to the public, and it's updated very regularly. And there's also hundreds of companies now uh, offering satellite imagery at different resolutions and different light bands and for whatever information you want to gather. Um, and here I want to highlight uh, some ways that satellite imagery has actually been used to bring transparency to the agricultural field. So this is actually, it, it's interesting because, um, because satellite imagery has been available to governments for a really long time. And it's only recently that it's been commercially made available and also available to the public. So what this has enabled in, in this example is, um, this is a photo by Mishka Henner. And he's an artist and he was looking for something entirely different and just stumbled upon this. And what you're looking at is uh, cattle fields. So the little squares have little cattle in them and an enormous blood pool for a farm that's obviously not taking care of their waste properly. And there's a whole series of these images uh, that uh, I invite you to check out because they're 
they're good. And um, this is an example of how EU common agricultural policy uses satellite imagery to um, reveal issues. So this is, this is oh yeah, they, they use uh, satellite imagery to check in on farmers to make sure that they're performing the activities that they said they would in order to receive their grant money. So this is just um, an example of the illegal dumping, which the farm got fined for. Um, and this might be a little bit difficult to interpret, but this is um, actually an example in Australia, which shows land that has been, um, shows land use change that where forests have been cut down to make room for agricultural land. So those are the, those are the good ways or the transparency bringing ways the satellite image can be applied, but then there's this issue of questioning what privacy rights a farmer has. And, and to kind of figure this out for myself, I, I thought of us as individuals, we think of privacy as a human right. Um, and then on the other end of the scale, there's uh, governments, which we expect as much pri uh, transparency as possible. Um, and we want to know how money is being spent and how decisions are being made. And then private companies are somewhere in the middle where um, there's consumer protection, where they can't be selling anything dangerous or, um, or dangerous to human health, or um, they, they shouldn't be polluting too much, or they should have good working conditions. So they're held to a certain standard, but we don't have cameras in every office building, and we don't, I think, advocate for this big brother way. Um, and, but then when you look at agriculture, they're kind of somewhere al around the area of private companies. And when you look at the financing of agriculture in the EU, 43% EU, of total EU spending was spent on agriculture in 2013. And this was 57.5 billion euros. So there's certainly a public interest or a public investment there to know kind of what's going on and to hold it up to certain standards. But at the same time, uh, farmers are individual producers and also there's not really a scale to show who's, who's a small private farmer and who's a big, big uh, agro-industrial business. Um, and also privacy protect, uh, this is a quote by Sunil Abraham from CIS India and it says privacy protection should be inversely proportional to power. So this is also to guide uh, how, how the privacy of farmers sh should be treated. Um, so in summary, uh, the agricultural community is taking great strides in a short amount of time with regard to the data security of the software and equipment they use. However, many activities are nevertheless entirely exposed to surveillance and observation. And, and this has shown that satellite imagery supersedes data protection policies in many cases, and there are currently no opportunities for opting in or opting out, and there's no discrimination between public and private spaces. And this has led to many open questions regarding the tension between privacy and transparency for the abundant availability of satellite imagery. So. I tried to make it short because I knew I was the last and that everyone would be tired and when I drink. Oh, and this.